Welcome to my Learn to Fly Here series. I'm a professional pilot and a former flight instructor. In this first video, we're gonna start with some basics, such as these, the four forces of flight and how they affect the airplane during flight. Then I'm gonna talk about adverse yaw and you'll figure out why you need to use rudder. And this thing, and why do we need to step on it? And we'll also discover basics like why we have to pull back on the yoke when we turn. Before we talk about straight level flight, let's talk about the four forces of flight that affect an aircraft at all times. There's lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Lift and weight oppose each other, as do thrust and drag. In level flight, lift and weight are equal. When you're at a constant airspeed, thrust and drag are equal. And as I said a second ago, thrust and drag oppose each other. So we've added power, thrust has increased as the airspeed of the airplane increases, drag will also increase. And when they are equal, the airplane will stop accelerating. But as we fly at a faster speed, that drag is also increased and it stays increased while we maintain that higher airspeed. And now as we increase back pressure by pulling back on the yoke, lift is increased, weight stays the same, and the aircraft begins to climb. And then once the aircraft levels off, lift and weight are once again equal. But if we push forward on the yoke, we can reduce lift and the aircraft will descend as weight stays the same. And while we're on the subject of lift and drag, there are two types of drag. When we increase lift, we also increase drag. That's called induced drag. Induced drag decreases the faster we go. There's also parasite drag. And that's drag created by any object on the airplane that does not aid in the production of lift. That would include antennas, lights, and rivets. Parasite drag increases the faster we go. One of the first things I taught students to do was trim the airplane. One way to reduce pilot workload is to have a properly trimmed airplane and have the airplane trimmed for straight and level flight. So one of the first steps in properly trimming an airplane is use the yoke to Level the airplane and then use trim to relieve the control forces. And when that's done and the airplane feels like it's trimmed, the next thing I would always teach students, let go of the airplane. See what it does. Count to five. If the nose is up or if it's climbing, you need more nose down trim and vice versa if the airplane's descending. And for straight level flight at a steady airspeed, once the airplane's trimmed, you can pretty much leave it there. Eventually over time as the aircraft weight reduces by burning fuel, the aircraft may have to be retrimmed. The airplane would also need to be retrimmed anytime the throttle is moved or if the configuration is changed by adding flaps or extending or retracting the landing gear. Another thing to recognize as a new pilot, when the aircraft is trimmed, look at the sight picture. Look at the distance between the nose and the horizon of the airplane. That amount of land between the nose and the horizon indicates a level flight attitude. So now we have a general idea of where the nose needs to be for level flight. We don't need to look at the attitude indicator to do this. We can do it by looking outside. And we can also do the exact same thing for bank information. We can look at our wingtips. How much distance is there between the wingtip and the horizon? We can also look out the right window at the right wingtip and do the same thing. And if the airplane is turned, in this case, we're making a shallow turn to the left. We can look out our right window and we can see the wingtip above the horizon. Look out the left and we can see a larger gap between the wingtip and the horizon. And one thing to not do as a student pilot or a new pilot is become fixated on an instrument or in this case, fixated on the attitude indicator as a VFR pilot. The most of our time is spent looking outside the airplane, not at the instrument panel. So we've gone over the basics of straight and level flight and how to use trim, but what about a climb? So the first step in climbing an airplane is not pulling back on the yoke. It's increasing throttle, then pulling back on the yoke. Here I've brought the nose of the airplane up to the horizon, and then I've backed that up with trim to hold the nose in that position. And another place we can get pitch information outside our airplane is out the window at that wingtip again. Here you can see the tip of the wing angled up toward the horizon, indicating the airplane is in a climb. So we have pitch information in three places, looking out the window in front of us, looking out at our wingtip, and also at the attitude indicator, 
and other instruments give us pitch information also, but that will come later. Here's a useful trick. Practice looking at your wingtip to fly level. Move it to where you think the airplane's level, then look back inside, see if you're climbing or descending. Being able to do this will just give you one more visual indication of the aircraft's pitch and bank information. If you try this, don't fixate on that wingtip. Keep your attention inside and outside the airplane. To make the aircraft descend, the first thing we can do is apply forward pressure to the yoke. And as the airspeed increases in the descent, we would need to use nose down trim. To counteract this, we can also reduce power. And during our descent, we can monitor the rate of descent with the vertical speed indicator. Right now, it's pointing down to about 300 feet per minute. To make the aircraft descend more, we could do one of two things. The first, we could reduce power. This will make the aircraft descend faster without gaining a lot of airspeed. We could also apply more forward elevator pressure along with some nose down trim to maintain it and that would make the aircraft descend faster but it would also increase the airspeed that we're descending at. Or you could also go throttle to idle and pitch down and get an even greater rate of descent and if you descend fast enough the airspeed will start to increase. And you can see now we're descending in excess of 2,000 feet because the vertical speed indicator is pegged at negative 2,000 feet. And there's no hard fast rule on descent rates. Normal descent rates would be anywhere from 500 to 1,000 feet per minute. And when we're finished descending, once we're nearing our altitude, first thing we can do is add throttle. That will help us level the aircraft off and maintain airspeed. And once that's accomplished, we can then retrim the airplane if needed. So now we've covered climbs, descents, and level offs. Let's go talk about turns. Before we get into turns, let's go over some basic aerodynamics encountered in turns. An airplane's turned with ailerons. These devices create asymmetrical drag which pulls the nose of the airplane in the opposite direction of the turn. This is called adverse yaw. Here the airplane's in a right-hand turn. The right aileron is deflected up, which creates a lower angle of attack. The left aileron is deflected down, which creates a higher angle of attack. And the higher the angle of attack, the more drag. So in this case, there's more drag on the left side of the airplane than there is on the right side. So because the nose would be pulled to the left in this situation, we would just apply right rudder. And to know how much right rudder needs to be applied, we would look at the turn coordinator. There's a little black ball. We would step on the ball. If the ball's to the right, we would press right rudder until the ball is centered between the two lines, which would give us a coordinated turn. So here we're going to make a right turn with just aileron. And look what happened. We had a few things happen. Let's look at it again, but in slow motion this time. First thing, we added a bunch of right aileron. As the right turn is entered, that left aileron has more drag and that pulls the nose of the airplane to the left. Also, look at the ball on the inclinometer. It's off to the right. So that tells us we need to step on the right rudder to push that ball back to the center. So to fix this, we need to use aileron and rudder at the same time. In straight and level flight, lift and weight are equal. But what happens if we make a right turn and we don't do anything other than just use aileron and rudder? Weight stays the same, but what happens to the amount of lift? When the airplane is turned, lift no longer directly opposes weight. Some of the lift is holding the airplane up vertically, and some of the lift is being used to make the airplane turn to the right. Now we have to pull back on the yoke to create more lift to maintain altitude. Here's an example of that. We'll do a steep turn. We're maintaining 3,100 feet. As we roll into the turn, watch where the yoke is over on the right side. Look how much it gets pulled back. We're maintaining 3,100 feet. Had I not pulled back on the yoke, the nose would have just dropped below the horizon and we would have started to descend rapidly. And that's why we pull back on the yoke in a turn. So the steep turn we just saw, we normally don't turn the airplane more than 30 degrees of bank. So we're gonna try some shallower turns. To determine bank angle in a turn, we can use the attitude indicator. The first mark that we're turning to right now is 10 degrees. Each of these first three marks indicates 10 degrees of bank, which are 10, 20, and 30 degrees. And as we roll into the turn, we use aileron and rudder at the same time to keep the turn coordinated. And even for a shallow bank turn, such as this 10 degree bank turn, 
we still have to apply back pressure the same way that we did when we saw the steep turn a minute ago, but we don't have to pull back as much because that vertical component of lift is still pushing down below us and the lift isn't being pushed off to the side as much as it was during the steep turn. And did you see what we just did there? We looked out the left window, we're getting ready to make a 20 degree bank left turn, but in airplanes, the same as cars, riding a bicycle, whatever, when you're turning, look out the window, make sure the area is clear before you turn. Because nothing's worse than turn into a heading and while you're turning, you look up and you see an airplane that you're flying towards because you didn't look out the window and clear the area first. Next, we're gonna make a right turn at a 30 degree bank. That's the first large white tick mark on the top of the attitude indicator. So the first thing we do is look to the right, make sure the area is clear before we start our turn. And as we roll into the turn, right there, we're rolling to that first large white tick mark. We're also using rudder to keep the ball centered. We've now seen 10, 20, and 30 degree bank turns. There's another kind of turn that we can also use, and that's called a standard rate turn. And we do a standard rate turn using the turn coordinator by putting the airplane wing on the white mark on the left or right side. And all this instrument does is tell us that we're turning at three degrees per second. It is an indirect indication of bank. So the attitude indicator can tell us a direct indication of bank like 10, 20, 30 degrees, but the turn coordinator can tell us our rate of turn. And on the bottom of the turn coordinator, below the inclinometer, you can see where it says two minutes. That two minutes means at a standard rate, it will take us two minutes to do a 360 degree turn. So I said a minute ago, the turn coordinator is an indirect indication of bank. It will tell us that we're banking, but not how much. But another thing that changes with that standard rate turn is the bank angle. The slower we're going, the shallower our bank will need to be to get a standard rate turn. The faster we're going with indicated airspeed, the steeper our bank will need to be to get a standard rate turn. And then last of all, we've talked about bank angles and turns, but what about pitch angles or pitch attitudes? Doing VFR flying, we're gonna spend most of our time looking outside but we do have pitch information as well on the attitude indicator. You can see the horizontal line on the attitude indicator going across in the middle. That means level or a level flight attitude. It doesn't necessarily mean the airplane's flying at a level altitude. It could be climbing or descending, but that's just a level attitude. And then we have lines above those. We can see the marks for 10 degrees and 20 degrees, and this goes up to 25 degrees of pitch. And the same for on the bottom in the brown. And there are also two angled lines down on the lower half of the attitude indicator. Those lines indicate 45 degrees of bank. That's it for this one. The next video, we're gonna talk about engine start, taxiing, and takeoff. Now you can click to the next video.